So for the motivation of like why we'd be looking at proteinuria in this population is when we're doing a clinical trial, so there's high demand for clinical trials. A lot of these rare diseases don't have any like FDA approved therapy for that specific condition. Um, high dose immunosuppressant therapies with horrible side effects are commonly used off label uh, like they are for lots of conditions. And sometimes they work more often not, and we don't know why they work. And we know there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, bad side effects of, of having to be on that kind of therapy anyway. So there's high demand for, for new therapies. Trials are difficult because the diseases are, are, are rare um, and the accepted really understood patient important outcomes would be uh, like going to kidney failure, which when someone is biopsied and diagnosed with um, something like FSGS, I mean, that could take like 10, 15 years. So that that's not going to be a good uh, endpoint of trial of like time to kidney failure or even following. Uh, so estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR, I'm sure you're probably familiar with, is a measure of, of kidney function. And when, when that gets to a valid, like in a normal person, you have a value of around 100. Um, and someone whose kidneys have failed, it's less than 10, less than 15. Um, so even like one thought would be, well, what if you don't follow all the way to kidney failure, but if you said uh, their loss of GFR over time, well, even that to really plot out a, a trajectory of what their GFR slope of what is like or how much they've lost, um, that can still be uh, a few years to really get a good stable estimate of something like that. You need like three, preferably like five years of data or something to know what their, what their, what their course is like. Um, so we really need some kind of like surrogate endpoint or accepted like early clinical endpoint to be able to tell in a few months, preferably a few weeks, like, is this therapy working or not? I mean, ideally at the patient level, that's how it would work too. You wouldn't want to be on years of therapy and then be told, oh, hey, that didn't work too late. Now you need a transplant. We want to see, well, are you responding to this treatment within a few, a few weeks? So it would make trials a lot more feasible. Um, and it is one of the it is one of the like the quintessential symptoms of nephrotic syndrome is is having excess uh, protein in the patient's urine. So that's pro proteinuria. Um, often we're thinking of it on like a continuous scale, and either grams of protein for 24 hours, or more often we take a ratio of the protein concentration in the urine to the creatinine concentration. The what motivated a lot of our specific research was um, what about those that don't that see a change in proteinuria, but they don't get all the way to a complete remission. So there's this just sort of made up definition of a partial remission that was really just sort of a dart on a wall. Like that sounds like a good clinical definition back in the day of saying like you, they, they partially responded. They reduced their proteinuria by at least 50% and their proteinuria is no longer in a nephrotic range. So say it's less than three, say they went from like five to 1.2 or something. That's, that's still ele elevated proteinuria. It's not nephrotic range, but if a, if a normal person had, had that high proteinuria, they would, they would call that proteinuria. I think you'd see that in like more uh, diabetic nephropathy, ne nephropathies uh, and, other, and, other, and other populations. I think there's a lot of, I think in preeclampsia, that's, a, that's sort of what they consider in, in, in an elevated range. It doesn't get quite as high as in the nephrotic ranges, but someone would still say like they are spilling protein, but for that patient, they've had a pretty big reduction. Does that matter? Um, does it matter at all if they get to a certain threshold? Is it is a 10% reduction making you 10% better in terms of long-term outcomes? Um, or do you need to get below some th certain threshold? So our thought there was to come up with, um, well, one, I mean, that, that, that does help clinically of knowing like if you partially responded, does that matter? It also helps in a clinical trial of you'd have a lot more statistical power if you have endpoints, one, if you had an endpoint that was continuous, if you could just say like percent reduction in proteinuria or whatever, um, or also if it had to be binary, if you had one that was more, the average patient was more likely to reach. So if you're gonna look at and say, we're gonna see 
uh, we're going to treat for three months and we're going to compare uh, usual care versus the experimental arm of who reaches complete remission. Well, if you're only expected to get like 10% reaching complete remission, it's, it's, it's harder to show, um, it's harder to show a difference um, if, uh, or even if, even if none are going to make, if you have like steroid resistant uh, disease, um, maybe your treatment, maybe your treatment, maybe it's not even like compared to usual care. Maybe your treatment just doesn't give that full on response of if it's, it's totally um, reversed, whatever's causing their disease. Um, and they're now in a complete remission. Maybe it is just, is just reducing your proteinuria by 50% or something. Um, does that still matter? So we were, we were trying to come up with, um, trying to get a better understanding of, of, uh, of, of what that looks like. Um, we went and did this analysis of uh, a clinical trial, the FS, so it's just called, there's so few FSGS clinical trials that for years, this one was just called the FSGS clinical trials. The NA, it was an NIH sponsored FSGS clinical trial of, of mostly younger patients, mostly younger steroid resistant patients who were either treated with two different types of second line immunosuppressants. So the question there was like, well, should we give them calcineurin or should we give them like a phenylate? Um, do you know some some respond to one, some respond to the other? Is there is there an average effect where one works better? The trial didn't find a difference there uh, between the two between which second line agent is better, but it gave us a cool source to look and say, you know, you've got um, data lined up right at this is where they were before they started treatment. They started treatment and then they're followed up using standardized central lab measurements um, out to 26 weeks. And we just looked at that on a continuous scale. So the, the, the math is confusing and that we're doing like differences in log proteinuria, but you can kind of think of that as percent reduction in proteinuria. The, the whole reason we're doing the log thing is the distribution of percent change is, is weird. Like it's, it's very right skewed. So like on the negative end, if you make no change, you have 0% change. If you go all the way down to zero proteinuria, 0 0.001 or whatever, you, you have a negative 99% change or a minus 100% change if it went all the way to zero, I guess I guess you could say. But if, if you double your proteinuria, but you, your proteinuria could go up. I mean, it doesn't, there weren't a lot of patients in that trial that had that, but yeah, if you doubled your proteinuria, now that's a, now that's a uh, 100% increase. If you, if it, it could go, if you went from one to 10, uh, that's a 1000% increase. So it's this really like asymmetric distribution. But if you do differences in the logs, um, you can still convert those values and interpret it on a, on a percent reduction scale. You can still say like a, a minus one, a value of minus one difference in logs corresponds to like a, it's like a 66% reduction or something. So we, we, we kind of put that in the papers to have it make a little bit more sense. That's why it gives it that sort of log linear shape um, in those figures, why it's not like this is the benefit of GFR per uh, reduction, per gram per gram reduction of proteinuria is because we just, we, we modeled it on a, on a log linear scale. But the idea is the same in that it's, it's a continuous value. It's not a like, yes or no variable. Yes, they responded. No, they didn't. It allows everyone's value to ask those that, that made it bigger within patient change in proteinuria. Did they have better slope of GFR over time? Were they less likely to progress to um, uh, end-stage kidney disease? Which is when we say like you've, you've, hit, you've, hit, you've hit kidney failure. Um, and uh, there we had some pretty, um, I, it was pretty compelling evidence. I mean, it's from the one single study but it's really like the best apart from like the privately owned duet phase two data that i think would also be a really good way to test this where you where you've got a clinical trial where you've got measurements standardized measurements that are aligned with when they're starting the new therapy we have all these observation observational data sets but you know the, the data are just kind of collected whenever, like in, in the, the Neptune study, the nephrotic syndrome study network, where patients are enrolled at the time of biopsy, and then they're followed in intervals, like after biopsy, they have a four month follow visit, an eight month follow visit. Well, that's, that's all time to the, the time they start biopsy, but the treatment is 
changing all over the place. I mean, we can model it and we can look at like the date they started steroids, the date they did, but like if someone starts calcineurin inhibitors between, you know, uh, between uh, 10 months, 10 and 11 months after biopsy, well, we don't have a study visit at that date. So we don't know like exactly. That's why in these clinical trials, it's a really strong data set to look at like how much did it actually, how much did it actually change after that, after that treatment was started. Um, but in that FSGSCT data set, we saw um, a pretty, pretty strong relationship that kind of, and again, like it's not one to one. It, it it it's not one to one like this. It is log linear. But if you're looking for like a shorthand, um, I think our relationship was a, like a 20 percent reduction in proteinuria was associated with a like one mil per year difference in in, in GFR slope over time, which the FDA would accept as as clinically significant. Mm -hmm.